For over a decade, Elmore Leonard has reigned as one of America's great crime fiction writers. His string of 13 consecutive bestsellers, including Get Shorty, whose film adaptation won John Travolta an Oscar nomination. The film rights to his latest novel, Out of Sight, were sold before the book was even published. It tells the tale of a career bank robber, a beautiful young federal marshal, and their odd romance. I am pleased to have Elmo Leonard back at this table. Welcome back, sir. Charlie, thank you. I know how big you are, because when I look at this book, your name is more prominent than the title. Above the title. Above the title. Mm -hmm. That says something, doesn't it? I think it's Is that in your contract? No, it isn't. No. That's just because mm -hmm. your bookseller knows what's going to make people come and buy this book. The, the They're buying an Elmore Leonard. The publisher designs the, the jacket. Now, when they buy an Elmore Leonard, what are they buying? They're buying, I think, uh, the way I tell a story. Because I don't... Plot comes along. There's a, there has to be a plot in it. There has to be a beginning, middle, and an end. But I think that people read me for the way it's told, not what it is, not what it's about. Yeah. They like the relationships, they like the type of characters you draw, and they like the way you can create a mosaic from rather disparate, not necessarily lovable characters. Yeah, and what, what, uh, what interests me the most is to let the characters, allow the characters to tell the story in the way they talk to one another, in one another the way they interact. <sighs> Other than practice, 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 how do you how do you create character? Well, what do you need to do? Um, I I don't base my characters, uh, with very few exceptions, on real people. They're they're made up, and yet they're types. I always begin with a type of person, and as I get to know that that particular type, uh, he becomes real to me. I have to give him a name. Names are so important. And I have to have the right name or he won't talk. Franks, a good guy named Frank, won't talk. I don't know why. So Jack, Jack will talk. Several, I've had several girls named Karen. Karen's in this book. Karen's a talker. Is Karen pretty? She's quite pretty, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, of course she's pretty. Yeah. And she has long legs, slim yeah. legs. And yeah. Yes. And so finding that character, <laughs> finding the right name, and yeah. giving them a voice. Mm -hmm. you gotta, but do you have that going in, or is that...? No, what, what I develop for them, or sometimes they develop, is an attitude. That's what I was going to say, attitude. They have to have an attitude. You know, about who they are and what life yeah, is about. Exactly. Yeah. This is where they, they came from. You know, or Do where you research going. much? A lot. Oh, an awful lot. An awful lot. Yeah. Like uh, what? I mean, what did you research well, in this book? In this book, uh, prison life from various angles, bank robbers, uh, the different, just, uh, I have my researcher get me newspapers and magazine stories of bank robberies, just all kinds of bank robberies. I learned that bank robbers are given uh, nicknames by the cops. Um, I learned, uh, I, I, I want to know about prison life. I want to know specifically about prisons that are mentioned in this one. Yeah. Lompoc, Lompoc, for example, yeah, right. in, in California. California. Right. So my researcher calls up Lompoc and he asks him questions about the yard, yeah. about this, the, uh, uh, the weather. Now, I remember from way in the deep recesses of my mind the notion that bank robbers were at the top of the totem pole in prison. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. They Whereas are. child molesters are at the bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the bank robber is, is, and by that I mean a real a pro bank robber. This is what he does and not a crackhead who needs to, right. uh, need to, need to fix. Know. Yeah. That they are respected more than, than, than others. And, but the old pros in prison resent all the, all the crackheads and all, all the dopers who uh, they, they consider... Uh, giving inmates a bad they're not, name. They're not pros. Yeah, you know, right. they're amateurs, and they're also, they, they tend to be snitches. They're not, not worthy of respect either. No. I mean... As, as real, authentic criminals. No. Yeah. And, and, and the criminal mind, how did you figure that out? Well, I think it's, it's just a question of a guy who wants to acquire as much money as he can without working. Yeah. 
I, mean, I think it's that simple. <laughs> he doesn't want to work. He doesn't want to work. I, I he doesn't want a more, job. I mean, you know, God knows more about this than I do. But it, isn't it about, it's, it's almost a sense of, I want to beat the system. I just, beating the system by is making money by not working. That's one way of beating the system. Yeah. But it's also, you know, it's an attitude about uh, a superior, I'm better. I don't have to work. I'm better than that. I can steal. I can defraud. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's going to tell people about it. Yeah. Because he wants them to know that he's better, that he got away with something. Yeah. So he tells someone, and then that person tells the cops and this guy that has to do time. Most crimes are solved because somebody yeah. tells somebody. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. They, yeah. they can't somehow, they make mistakes. Well, I, I, all, most of my characters are, are not well educated. And they, they may have street smarts, but they're not very bright. Uh, because I, and I think this is the way criminals are for the most part. Now, is it realistic to have Karen in this, your case, 20, how old is she? 29. 29. Fall in love? We don't know. With a yeah. con? Yeah, sure. Why not? The, the type of person that she is, a romantic? Yeah. Sure, I can see it. You don't have to suspend belief to believe that. No. But uh, to, to, to picture it, to picture it as, as a movie, uh, she's going to fall in love with somebody, say, 20 years, almost 20, at least at least 20 years her senior. Because? Because that's how old he is. That's how old I want him to be. Oh, I see. The old pro. He's yeah. been doing it since he was yeah. 18 years old. So you create old. a character that will be attracted to a man 20 years older than she yeah. is. Yeah. A 46-year-old man. Yeah. Why are your novels, more than most, made into movies? What is it you do? Well, they, they look like movies. They, uh, they're written in dialogue. In, they're written in scenes and they, they're moved with dialogue. So they look like movies. And do you do it because it's just your way of writing or because you got your eye on this film adaptation? Uh, it's my way of writing. Although in the beginning, it was my aim back f more than 40 years ago to sell to the movies and to sell well and to, uh, and to make money at this. And you have. Yes. Selling to the movies has, and I think out of 33 books, 30, at least 30, the first three haven't, are not optioned now. They, had, they were optioned at one time. But of the 33 books, 30 have been bought or optioned, plus uh, short stories that also are made into movies. In the you ever want to produce one yourself? No. Why not? Well, I almost did, and I, and I wasted a lot of time. It's not what I do. I just, I, I want to write, this is, and I don't want to write movies because that's work. You, uh, you're working for somebody. You're, you're, you have to please certain people. Not certain people, you have to please a lot of people. You love it. Writing. writing. Yeah. yeah, I like to, I really do. I mean, do. you enjoy your work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not something about shelter and bread. No, I really do enjoy it, yeah. I, I, I get, uh, enormous satisfi satisfaction out of doing f four, uh, f at the end of the day, four or five clean pages. What I think four are clean. Five. Yeah, four Clean five. means you don't have to do anything to that, it? There, they're done, and boy, that works. Until I look at those pages the next day, and then I start to fool with them and fill in here and change this and so on. And see, but that's I did what this, it is. I, see, I, if I did this, I would have to go all the way through. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of writers, and, lot and, of writers and, and, and do. With, no, I, I, I don't do that. I fix it I as can't. I go along. And as I go along, get ideas, plot ideas, then I have to go back and insert little scenes or, or statements to make it work, whatever I think of later on. But that's, to me, the whole thing is just rewriting, rewriting, rewriting until I get to about page 300. And by there, by then, I should know how it's going to end because it's going to end in the next 50 pages. I was going to say, you've got 50 pages to go, so <laughs> yeah. it's better. Yeah. Now, they say that a lot about a lot of movies and a lot of books, is that they get two-thirds of the way there, and they don't know where to go. So they mm -hmm. just end it without any neatly creative ending. That's well, a criticism well, of a lot of films well, there and are, books. Yeah, well, there are a lot of stories that, you, that are, Can't are tie up. grabbers in the beginning, and then all of a sudden it just... Out. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't because, know how to... Well, it's, it's hard. <laughs> You know, it's not easy, but boy, it's 
I don't think there's anything like it. You write in the morning and the noon and night, or just in the morning? All day. All day. Six, uh, 9.30 to 6. Is that right? Yeah. You take a break for lunch? Sometimes. You don't, but you don't, like, go away and, you know, take three hours in the middle of the day and go out and... Oh, no. No, that's... that's I don't go out and eat lunch with people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's oh. with that's the worst thing. You don't you hang can out do. with <laughs> no anybody. And talk about writing. No. You just do it. Do it. Computer? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, pen. 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 Yellow pad? Uh, yeah, but my own. They're unlined yellow pads that I have made for you. Mm-hmm. Eight and a half by eleven yellow. Why unlined? Um, I worked at an ad agency that uh, provided buff colored uh, unlined yellow pads and I liked them uh, a lot so now I have them I have them made I'll, I'll buy uh, 50 pads at a time 5,000 sheets and that lasts a uh, year and a half have you tried a computer no I know I'm gonna get by without ever having touched one there's no need to this is a personal goal of yours yes it is <laughs> because uh, <laughs> machinery turns me off in every anyway yeah. And there's something sort of soulful about taking a pen. And yes, that's writing. Yeah. Writing. And then, of course, I do. I have an electric typewriter now. Yeah. What do you do with that? I mean, once I do a few pages in longhand, then I put it on my typewriter. You type it yourself? You have somebody come well, in and do that, that for you? No, no. I, I do that because that's just part of the process. That page comes out, and then I go over it. And, you know, no, the, someone does the final typing. But, uh, yeah, I have to look at it uh, typed. But... Uh, my my editor says that she can tell she thinks she can tell those books that are created on the computer the ones that were written by guys who didn't who used just a typewriter before or or longhand and i think and she says they're not as good and i think it's because they look good the page looks good uh, on the screen therefore it must be good you know I so so it's easy to do it with a computer and, and so there because it looks good and it's all nicely arranged and therefore um, you don't see the imperfections in it. I think that's the theory. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't believe that for a second. Well, maybe it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> no. You said to me last time you were here that uh, you know, you weren't only interested in writing a screenplay if it was an original screenplay. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Are you doing anything about that? No. No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. How many uh, books? Are you? I, this is 31, is it? What is this, no, 30? that's 33. Uh, 33. That's 33, and I'm into 34. So uh, then I'll do 35. Of course, you know? then you do 36. Yeah. yeah. How many do you set out to do? What's, what's the sequence? I mean, you do one a year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and one it's a pretty year. much works that way. Yeah, yeah, because it takes, uh, you think about it for a couple of months or so, and then... Uh, get the research going and then uh, take five or six months to write it and there you are. Who do you read? I read, uh, right now I'm reading, ab I'm reading about the, uh, the, uh, the great Indian mutiny in uh, the Sepoy rebellion in, uh, in Indian 17, in um, 1857 when all in the Indian state? troops. In where? In the northern part, in the Dakotas, the, or no, no, in India. Oh, in when India. All the in Indi India. When oh, all yeah. the 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 uh, the uh, Indian troops rebelled, revolted against their their uh, British officers, and and massacred thousands of British living in India at that time in 1857. I happen to be reading that because I don't read fiction when I'm writing a book. Why not? Because I'm I'm. I'm perhaps too impressionable, and I may start to pick up someone else's style <laughs> or someone else's uh, punctuation, which I've done. Oh, uh, in other words, you've read other people and their punctuation seeped into your own yes, writing? Yes, all of a sudden I'm writing compound complex sentences with semicolons after reading... Um, Who did that to you? William Goldman did that to me back with The Marathon Man. That was yeah. some years ago. William Goldman, the screenwriter? Yes. Joan Didion got me paragraphing in a strange way one time. I've forgotten what book it was that I, of hers that I had read. What's your favorite of these? Uh, Freaky Deaky. Freaky Deaky is. <laughs> yeah. Where did the title come from? Uh, the dance. Freaky, Freaky Deaky. Deaky. Freaky Deaky in Detroit. There was a dance in the late seventies where it happened that where people were doing the Freaky Deaky, people got shot. 
Because yeah. if you get if you if you're doing the freaky deaky with somebody else's wife, you could get in trouble. All right. So stay away from somebody else's wife if you want to do the freaky deaky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Leonard Elmore Leonard's book, Out of Sight. Um, it's always great to have you here. Come back anytime. Charlie, thank you. Pleasure. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Marv Albert is here, and we'll talk a little sports when he shows up. Back in a moment.